maker, our all in all. You're the great I am. You're the bright and morning star. Father God, we invite your presence this morning. We pray right now and ask God that you would just grace us this morning, that you would, oh God, God, just move by your spirit. We thank you for the atmosphere being charged so that the anointing can flow and move and do exploits. Thank you in advance for your people being charged. Thank you for your people, oh God, being filled with your glory, filled with your spirit, filled and impacted. God, impacted by oh God by your love and by your presence. We thank you in advance, God, right now. We speak clap to Eleanor right now in advance in Jesus' name to anything, God, to the airwaves, to the equipment, God, to, oh God, the connections. And we just thank you in advance, God, that everyone, God, being filled, everyone, oh God, hearing the word, everyone being set free, delivered. Thank you in advance for, oh God, we we rebuke right now any, any work of darkness right now. We decree and declare any attack is done against your people this morning. It is reversed and boomerangs back. Seven times greater than the one that sent it. Thank you, God. We speak crop failure to any plan. We speak crop failure right now to any technical difficulties in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for releasing your power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for releasing, oh God, your power, your presence, your anointing. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise as a people, oh God, as we stand to our feet, oh God, and we begin to enter to that place to worship you, to glorify you on one accord. We thank you in advance, God, for meeting us here today. And we praise you, God, whether we're home or whether we're here. We thank you, God, grace every home, grace this building, grace your people with the anointing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for adding to the church daily such as should be saved. Thank you for healing. Thank you for a powerful word today that's going to come forth to deliver, heal, and set free. We thank you right now in advance, God, for your presence. And we thank you, oh God, as we just begin to worship. We worship. We worship. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one with one accord. Every praise, everything we have, everything within us, it all belongs to the Lord. We hold nothing back, nothing for ourselves, but we give him everything. We give him our all in all. Every praise, oh God. This morning is to our God. Every word of worship. What? With one accord. What? Every praise. Every praise. Oh God, we thank you right now. You've been a good God. You've been a great God. You've been a mighty God. You've been a fantastic God. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the praise, Jesus. Come on and worship with me. Come on and bless him. Come on. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Mm -hmm. Sing hallelujah to our God. Put your hands together. Come on. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Go on up, come on. Every praise to our God. Every word of worship with one of course. Every praise, every praise to our God. Mm -hmm. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. What up again? Come on. Every praise to our God. Every word of worship with one of you. Every praise. Praise to our God. All right, come on, lift up those hands. Come on. Sing hallelujah to our 
We give you thanks. We give you glory as we give you honor. You are the reason why we praise. You're the reason why we rejoice. You're the reason why we give thanks. Because this is the day that you have made. We do rejoice and we're glad and grateful in it and because of it. Now, Lord, let your blood prevail. Let your grace rest upon us. Let your worship be in our mouth, Lord God, and let your worship and your praise be from our heart. Lord, we ask you to get the glory out of the day. Lord, we are mindful of those who cannot come to worship. We are mindful of those that are sick and infirm. You are still Jehovah Rapha. You are still the provider and the way maker. You are still El Amuna, the faithful God. So have your way today in the midst of the worship. By your anointing, yokes are destroyed. Burdens are removed. Satan is cast down. And the power of the Holy Ghost brings rescues and abides. Now, Lord, get the glory out of our worship. Lord, let there be signs, wonders following and accompanying the word. Even now, Lord, we thank you that you are the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. We believe in your power. We bless your name as we raise our voices and shout hallelujah, hallelujah to your Lord. Great God, awesome God, everlasting God. Be glorified in this place today and we give you praise. Come on one more time with those hands together. Shout with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Man, I feel the Lord in here. Welcome everybody to worship. This is Sunday worship. First Sunday of worship at Light Builders Church. We here and I was glad when they set up the beat. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I am the walking house of the Lord. Therefore, whatever I walk into becomes the house of the Lord. So, beloved, I bring the Lord with me. I don't just come to meet him. He's already here. Somebody look at the name across the building and say, he's already here. He's already here. My God, today to see so many out to worship, and I pray God for so many that have joined us on social media platforms. Those that will join us later, we thank God. We're going to go forth in the worship, and we're going to do our declaration. This month is the marvelous month of May. Amen. 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 I'm partial to May. Amen. <laughs> but I thank God for it. Families are leading worship this month. Who best to start off than Pastor Al and I? And if Evan wants to come up and be a part of this, we didn't make him do it because he does so many other things. And he'll be going in June. Amen. His turn with the men. But I am so thankful, amen, for being able to do the declaration. As the first family of Light Builders Church, we take our part first. Amen. amen. So can we do our declaration today? Light Builders Church is a church and ministry. Focus on the agenda of the kingdom of God. We are corporately called to be a people of prayer, kingdom action, kingdom building, and transformers of lives and builders of people that know their purpose and take their place as productive citizens of the kingdom of God. We have God's mandate. We have all necessary components in place, inclusive of power, provision, personnel, and people. Come on, let's say it. We have men for the vision and people for the work. We have everything we need. I think we need to say that again. We have everything we need. I think we need to say it again. We have everything we need. We have all that God ordained for us to have. Possess and obtain for his purpose. We are a stable house with longevity. We are relevant. We are vibrant and fresh. We impact this generation and future generations for his glory. Hallelujah. 2023 is our year to retake mountains and territories, lands and platforms with divine strategies 
and solutions as we build and expand for the kingdom and the glory of God. Without fail, we recover all. Can we give God praise for that declaration? Come on, praise to what you did. Build this world. Somebody may ask a question, why do we do declarations? Because the Bible says that from the abundance of our hearts, our mouth speaks. The Bible says in Job, if you decree a thing, you shall declare it, and it shall come forth and be accomplished, and it shall be granted unto you. My God, I believe I have what I say according to the will of God. I believe that the Lord wants me to speak his word in every situation because his word is not only in my mouth, his word is in my heart. And out of the abundance of my heart, the mouth speaks. I speak wealth to you, prosperity to you. I speak healing to you. I speak divine insight to you. I speak over your life and over your family that you are the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. Bless and not curse. Those that are hearing me now, those that will hear me later, I dare you open your mouth and declare over your house, over your atmosphere, over your car, wherever you are today, you declare I'm blessed and not cursed. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I am anointed and appointed by God for greatness. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's not because I said it. It's because God said it. And I agree with God. I, anybody feel like praising him today? Amen. Lord God, get the glory because you are awesome. That's where I'll lead us into worship. My God, I want everybody to lift your hands. This is not a spectator show. Amen. This is not something that we just come to do. We believe to enter his gates with thanksgiving. And forth with Praise. Somebody declare this is the protocol. Hallelujah. Enter his gates with. Enter his courts with. Hallelujah. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Father, you're awesome. You're mighty. You're powerful. Come on, don't let me worship by myself. You're all together lovely. You're the root of our salvation. The joy of every part of our existence. You're the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You are the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You are the great God, the awesome Savior, the marvelous King. Come on, worship him. I feel the breath of the Lord in this room. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Lord God, we enlarge you. We magnify you above our problems as we put you first. Lord, you meet the need. You answer prayer. You do the work. You bind up the brokenhearted. You pour in oil and the wine and soothe the soul of your people. Lord, we just give you glory. Hallelujah and honor. Hallelujah. Don't stop worshiping. He's great. Can you say he's great? He's great. He does miracles so great. Somebody, somebody said there's no one else like you. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world will be made into our living. Hallelujah. That is the light of the glory of the Lord. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship. Yes, I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory yeah. and the honor. I lift my hands in worship. I bless your holy name for you.
16 to 22. I will read it briskly in your Bible. Say word. Y'all didn't say it loud enough. Say word. Chronic my hands in two. Now go and call together the elders of Israel. Tell them Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me. He told me I have been watching closely and I see how the Egyptians are treating you. Somebody need to grab that today. <laughs> I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey. The land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. God have mercy. The elders of Israel will accept your message. Then you and the elders must go to the king of Egypt and tell him the Lord, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. So please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go. Because I might say everything that is trying to bind me is about to let me go. Amen. Uh, and I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. They will give you gifts when you go so you will not leave empty handed. Every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold and fine clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and daughters with these, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Exodus 12. Let's hurry and get there. Verse 33 to 36. Y'all with me? Oh, again, from the New Living Translation. All the Egyptians urge the people of Israel to get out of the land as quickly as possible, for they thought we will all die. The Israelites took their bread and dough before yeast was added. They wrapped their kneading boards in their cloaks and carried them on their shoulders. And the people of Israel did as Moses had instructed. The Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites, and they gave the Israelites, whatever they asked for, so they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. Before you see them, beloved, I want you to notice from this text, the instruction of the word of the Lord was given. God said, go and just plunder these people. <laughs> God said, take from them their wealth. And I want you to understand that the Lord is ready to do something awesome and miraculous in all of our lives that every enemy that's been stealing your stuff, first of all, they are decreed from the word that when the thief is found out, they must restore sevenfold what they took. Somebody need to praise God on that. If a thief has stolen your health, your wealth, if a thief has stolen your peace, your joy, your mind, and the God of our salvation given assurances. He has been found out according to the word of Jesus that it is the thief that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But he said, I've come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Now, I'm not one that teaches or preaches getting back at people, but the devil's not a person. He's a spirit trying to destroy me. And I want you to look at somebody and say, I'm about to plunder Egypt. <laughs> God, y'all didn't say that you're about to get something. I'm about to plunder Egypt. Oh, we're going to talk this morning as you're being seated. How will you plunder Egypt? I know the word plunder is not a word we use every day. Usually we use words in our modern vernacular. I'm taking it back. We, we, we use words like I'm about to get paid. And, uh, you know, in order to plunder, I know that some of y'all don't know anything about treasure island. 
I remember when Zah was a little boy, my mother was given a record player by my Uncle John, my Uncle John. We had that record player when we lived on our Venus Avenue went down. I had two stories that I would often lay on the floor in the dining room and listen to as a young boy. One of my stories was Aladdin. Yeah. They, they were no believe me when I tell you. We didn't have cassette tapes when I was a little boy. Some of y'all look at me real strange. I, I tell them my age. We didn't have cassette tapes. We didn't have, definitely, we didn't have CDs, DVDs, MP3s, uh, Blu ray. We had the film in a camera that went around the ripping one wheel into the other, going through a big monstrosity to show us our movies. Nobody remember that. I know you got me. I know you tracking with me, Roz and Ronnie Pass out. I know that. Hey, Amen. Mom, I know my, my, my father used to have a movie camera. He was proud of the movie camera. And uh, we were proud to sit there and look at our home movies. But the record player was playing a wax record and the entire story on side A and side B was about a ladder. Then, uh, uh, Reese, I had another record of a story of Treasure Island. Treasure Island, and I remember uh, all of those individuals, uh, Will uh, and the Black Spot, and, and, and how the pirates would plunder their booty. Now, booty, back in the day, I was going on in something different than the beats today. Amen. Booty, booty means you stole something from somebody. I will leave that alone. But but <laughs> but I need y'all to recognize that 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 uh, the, the black beard, if I'm not mistaken, would often talk about uh he's gonna take the booty from 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 the prisoners. He's going to take their stuff and uh, he used the word plunder. So beloved, I need you to understand in the real sense of the word. All of us have had something stolen from us in our lifetime. Some things are tangible. Some things are unseeable, yet tangible, which is, in other words, intangible. Some things we can put a value on, and some things have no ready value or value to us. God forbid pictures of you when you were a baby if they got left out in the sun by the Polaroids God have mercy the sun would ruin those pictures if it was out too long or if the picture was taken and you used it and too much light was exposed it would fade very quickly anybody know what I'm talking about see I have a few Polaroids that are barely negligible I mean I see the head so I know it's me but, but beloved, you know, those things, memories are captured. What price do you put on a memory? A good memory. What price do you put on your first roller coaster ride? What price the first time you sat up front? Yes, I love that feeling you made. What price do you put on learning how to ride a bike? The first time. Get it on when you fell and riding it better the next time. What, what price? What price can you put on your prom when you were all bottled up and you were the center of attention on your wedding day? What price can you put on those photographs if something happens to them? I'm glad to report we still got our marriage album. We still have that 40 year old book. It'll be 40 in January. Put aside, you know, and I would hate if anything ever happened to that book because pictures were taken when I was at some pictures were taken, my God, when I had on tucks and tails. And Pastor Al, my God, was so beautiful and she is more beautiful then now than she was then. But that memory was captured. Oh my God. Oh my God. A feather that was on the pin that the guests wrote to our book is also in that wedding album. Our program is in that wedding album. 40 years old. But what price can be put on that? Plunder. The enemy don't care about your memories. He don't care about the value you put on. But I dare somebody declare today 
I'm leaving Egypt. And I'm taking my stuff with me. That's a place of praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God, as I move along quickly, God told Abraham in Genesis 15 that his descendants would be captive in Egypt for over 400 years. And afterward, he would bring them out to inherit the land of Canaan. Now, we do not always readily understand the ways of God. Can I get a witness? Sometimes anybody like me ask God, what are you doing? <laughs> it's not irreverent. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. So I ask questions. Because I need answers. Don't, don't let anybody tell you don't question God. God never said don't question me. God said don't doubt me. You can ask God why this, why that, why the other. He may not answer you the way you want to be answered, but I did hear the old folks saying, I, I hate the cliche you, but I did hear, and I lived long enough to see it's true, Robin, that some things you will understand better by and by. Some things that God answered, you couldn't take the answer. So the Lord has the wisdom what to answer, when to answer, and even his silence is an answer. And I've learned that when he's silent, he said, you ain't ready for it yet. Y'all helping me. So we will not always fully understand, Rishi, the ways and the methods of God. But I am confident in what Romans 8, 28 says. We come to realize that all things, I feel like preaching today, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and all who are the call according to his purpose. You may not answer me, but it's going to work for my good. You may let me go through process, Mother Cherry, but it's going to work for my good. God, you may not give me the answers to every question, but it's going to work for my good. I may feel alone, but even in the long times, it's working for my good. I wish you would tell three people it's working for your good. He never promised you would understand everything, but he did promise it will work. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost for my good. Beloved, I feel confident in the fact that although I don't understand everything, I know that it's working for my good. How do you know that? Number one, because God said so. How do you know that? Number two, because I sure do love the Lord. Can somebody give an I love the Lord praise? Can somebody open your mouth and tell God I love you? With tears in my eyes, I love you. When I Standing in every area of my process, I love you. Lord, I just got to say I love you because you're first love. And I am called according to your purpose. Now, I've walked with God long enough, let's go chronically, to understand that his foresight, his insight, and his oversight, let me say that again, his foresight, his insight and his oversight is accurate and without fail. Can I get a witness? God sees further than I. He is eternal. He sees the past, the present, and the future all at once. He's not limited by space and time. So he has foresight, insight, and oversight without error, accurate without fail. And in everything he knows what he's doing, and can I get a witness, he does all things well. I know we don't feel like it when we're in process, but when process ends, we can declare he does all things well. Can't say that, King because your life will prove God loves you and He does all things. 
say, well, y'all not going to help me preach. This means say it with me. I know some of y'all said it hesitantly. I know Fallon is like, I don't know what you're talking about, Bishop. But beloved, he does. Well, <laughs> now here's a big drop I had to make early in the message so y'all won't get bent out of shit. Y'all tracking with me on Zoom? I need y'all to understand. He does not owe us an explanation. But he always wants our good. Now, that is supposed to make you feel better. But I know in your flesh you don't. Because we want to understand everything. We want God to answer us we want God to give us reason for the rhyme, purpose for the pain, and passion for the push forward. But God doesn't always do everything we want when he wants us to do it right. And he don't owe us an explanation. How many ever heard your parents say the following words? Because I said so. <laughs> Why I got to clean my room? Why I got to eat that broccoli? Why I got to go to school? Why I got to wear that ugly dress? Why I got to stop hanging around Billy Ball? There are some answers God gives that sound exactly like that. We all don't look at the body, just look at the we all want to be up there asking God, but why? Why? When you're going through longer than you like, Elder Vina, we want to say, are we dead yet? Yeah. I mean, we got these questions before God. I don't like long trips and don't know where I'm going. I'm a five-year-old kid. I'm in the back when and I wonder, you said we're going to Disney World, we're in Kissimmee, we're in Disney, but the traffic made us get that hour after you said, and after it takes longer than 10 minutes, I am in the back saying, we act that way towards God. You promised me. September 1st, 1919. It didn't come to pass until September 10th, 2019. That's how we feel, Lord. You are 100 years, God. <laughs> you take a long time doing what I believe is process, but here's where we have a problem. Is it really necessary? Come on. Look at yourself. I don't know everything I need to know. I, I don't know what's in front of me all the time. I don't know what the next five minutes going to bring. Y'all remember I said God has foresight, insight, oversight. He's already in my future before I get there. This process is necessary to prepare me for what I don't know what he does. Y'all not helping me now. Y'all don't like that word. His process is involved to not only prepare me for what's coming, but prepare what's coming for me. Now, he prepares it in two ways. He does the perfect work up front, pulls me back and releases me to walk towards it. But then he also preserves it till I get there. So somebody that's going through process right now, you declare my stuff ain't going nowhere till I get there. You say it by faith, somebody is waiting on God right now. You declare it ain't going nowhere till I get there. And if the thief comes and takes it, I'm going to get sevenfold what he took. I, I feel Because he knows what he's doing. He don't owe us an explanation, but he loves me. Now, let 
me hurt and I'm not going to get out of here. See, God used the captivity of Egypt in order to do several things. He used it to instruct the people, to empower the people, and he endeared himself to the people. Did I say that again? Now, say, you blessed my soul in worship this morning. You didn't sing it for me, but God had mercy and touched me, especially when you said you were great. <laughs> oh, you do miracles. <laughs> so great that it is no one else like you. God used the captivity of Egypt to instruct the people, to empower the people, and then to what? Endear. Himself to the people. Maybe I'm mentioning the wrong syndrome. I think it's the hell sinking syndrome. Help me out if I'm right. Some people actually fall in love with their captors. Am I right? Stockholm, I knew it was one of those. I'm like, how in the world do you fall in love with somebody holding you? The longer it takes, the more you fall in love. Are you crazy? But it's a human thing that comes to make you adjust to your external circumstances. You know what? Far as God is concerned, some things He lets us endure so we can see how faithful He is. And the more I see him faithful, the more I grow to love him. Y'all no, no, not, no, not liking that. You're saying, Bishop, you are, in other words, telling me not to ask him to end it too quick. Not to ask him to take it away. Not to ask him to move me or move it or move something. You're telling me just sit down, shut up, and take it. No, I didn't say those words. But I did say that I lived long enough to discover that whatever process God takes me through, the longer it lasts, the more I grow to love. That don't mean I want it to last, but that means that every hour it lasts, I learned to praise Him. I learned to bless Him. I learned to put my expectation on Him. Because if I'm coming out and he said I'm coming out, when I come out, he will be right there with me. He was there with me in it. He will be there with me through it. He'll be there when I get out of it. And he's faithful. I wonder if I got anybody in here that can thank God for being faithful. Anybody lived long enough? Anybody been through enough to declare God he is faithful. I mean, I like how I feel. I mean, I like what they said. I mean, I like being in this thing. But when I look at everything I deal with, God is faithful. No, I don't fall in love with the process. But I'm falling in love with the Lord every day. Because I could have died in the process. I could have been destroyed through the process. But everybody that it recognizes and you live long enough, is it true to you that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before? Somebody ought to clap your hands and praise God. Oh, I'm not praising him for the process. I'm praising him because he's sweet. I'm praising him because he's faithful. I'm praising him because he's good. I'm praising him because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. The more somebody wrote it this way, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. See, 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 when you realize, y'all gonna like this, that the process is not gonna end till it ends. And I'm gonna come out on the other end better than 
and I went in. Will you settle with that fact? Your hands will go up, your mouth will go open, and you'll even cut a stop because you know that many may be the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them. That's a good place to pray. Y'all helping me now. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I got an all praise. He delivers out of all. That's why you don't get bit out of shape. That's why you don't leave the church. That's why you don't walk away from God because you're on the winning side. Your situation don't determine what side you are on. My God, I'd rather go through with God. I don't want to know how it feels to go through without it. So God used, let me hear the long chronicle. He used the captivity in Egypt in order to instruct the people, to empower the people, and endear himself to the people. Hmm. But guess what? God had more than Israel in mind through that process. How many have learned the art of learning from other people's process? You look at a neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm going to say it loud, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. You're learning from other people's process and they're learning from you. People are watching you whether you want to know it or not. They're watching how you endure. They're watching whether you mean what you say. Can I be logical for a minute? Why should God bless you with what he promised you if you didn't mean I'm going to serve you? Don't raise your hand. I want you to hurt yourself. Ever told God, I'll serve you no matter what. Let me look at the wall. I'll live for you no matter what. Lord, I'll follow you no matter what. Then no matter what comes, and you talking about, I ain't going back to church no more. I'm out of here. Lord, you left me hanging high and dry. But I dare somebody who's ever been through enough and still here to give God not just a still here praise, but a praise that declares that I love you more than I've ever loved you before. I'm still here. So God, in like manner, had something in mind people of Israel. What did he have in mind? His process instructs us, empowers us, and endears us. But here's where we learn the lesson that many of them didn't learn. In fact, because many of them didn't learn it, it caused a 40-year wandering. Here's where the meat of the message comes. We're going to praise God. When you don't learn from the process, you're doomed to repeat the process. The wilderness you won't learn from the wilderness you'll repeat. The lesson you don't learn will be the lesson you'll endure over and over and over. He might be tired of riding the ground all day long. Y'all saw that movie, right? I hate that movie. Because, beloved, I looked at it one day and it disgusted me because it showed me me why I was living in perpetual groundhog day. Man, that's a good preach. Because I did not learn what I needed to learn. I complained too much through it. I acted up too much through it instead of draining it dry of whatever I needed. So our process chronicle is to drain the process dry and get all of it, all out of it that there is to get. Can I give you a real life lesson? Anybody ever chewed a piece of gum until all the flavor was out? What started out sweet turns nasty. When you chew it and get all the juice out, it's time to Throw it away. Y'all don't like that part. When you have no more taste, man, this is a, I'm dropping a bomb on you. 
market, when it loses its taste, it's time to spit it out. See, like, when there's nothing left in the go, it's time to let it go. I would like to think that it loses its taste because I learned something. Just like a piece of gum is not designed to last eternally, your process is not designed to last eternally. You're supposed to get out of it what's intended, drain it dry of everything in it, and then throw it away. From our text, God at first I'll flip it around. Hold your mute, boy. I'm closing in a minute. But from our text, we see that God allowed the people of Israel to plunk the Egypt. Somebody praise God for the plunk. That ain't no praise, it's a penny cake. Don't remember I told y'all, don't let me pull up my arrow story. When Elisha told the king to bang the arrows on the ground, he only tapped the ground three times. And Elisha told him, if you had hit it harder, you would have thoroughly destroyed the enemy. We've got to learn, like builders, that when nuggets are dropped on us and we're called to respond to the nugget, you got to respond like you want it to happen right now. Somebody ought to give God a pleasure in this time. He told Moses, tell the people, get ready to plunk the Egypt. In Exodus chapter 3, we read it. He told the people, it's going to happen. 400 years of slavery, y'all going to plunk to these people that enslaved you. Somebody say, I'm taking something out of this. Because <laughs> whoever's messing with me now, I'm going to leave with this stuff. Whatever the enemy is doing to me now, I'm going to leave with sevenfold what I went into it with. Whatever he stole, I'm getting back. So you know what moved me and Pastor Al? Calling it back mode. <laughs> Y'all better catch this. I'm calling it back mode. What peace I lost, I'm calling it back. What joy I lost, I'm calling it back. What great mind I lost, because some of y'all think I'm crazy. I'm calling it back. My God, whatever the enemy's taken from me, I'm not only calling it back, but seven times what he stole. I'm going to give y'all two seconds to give God a calling it back praise. I'm going to continue to ask you to praise God, because your praise steals the deal. Your praise seals the deal. Your praise seals the deal. I'm going to say it to you, me that your praise seals the deal. Your praise seals the deal. Your praise. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. He told Moses in Exodus 3, I'm going to plunder the Egyptians. In Exodus 12, it happened just like God said. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. And Egypt was basically bankrupt when the people of Israel left. Real quick, let me hurry up and finish this. Pharaoh didn't chase the slaves because he missed them. Pharaoh chased the slaves because when they left, Egypt, they took the gross domestic product out of Egypt in one night. They plundered the wealth of the Egyptians in one night. What that was, was back pay. You with me? Here's my back pay. You made me make bricks without straw. Here's my back pay. You threw my children in the Nile. Here's my back pay. I'm here to declare today is the first day of your back pay days. Somebody better get it. Somebody better understand. I got some back pay. The enemy is going to have to pay me for the junk he took me through. 
the chariots. God's about to move you in a place of being overwhelmed. Where my people were overwhelmed. I hear God say, I'm going to overwhelm your enemies. Where your people, my God, were brought under being panicky. God said, I'm going to make the enemy panic. Did you not read in the Bible when Jesus said they'll be cast in the outer darkness? They will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Anybody know he wasn't talking about people? He talked about the demonic forces, powers of darkness. Enemies about to cry over you. If y'all go praise God, I will praise God. Because the enemy's about to shed some tears. He thought they had me, but I got away. He thought that he destroyed me, but I raised up from the ashes. Can somebody give God 30 seconds of oh, our God delivered praise? Oh. Hallelujah! Even babies praising God. Hallelujah. We got to endure process in order to see fulfillment manifest. Oh God. God's about to bankrupt your Egypt. Somebody better catch that word. God's about to bankrupt your Egypt. Oh, the questions are what will we take from it so that we Number one, drain it dry of all that's in it for us. Somebody say, I got to drain this thing dry. Then number two, champ, what's in it for us that we make it so that we don't have to go back to it or go back through it once we leave it? Oh, yeah. Say, what I've been through, I ain't going through that no more. Y'all said that now, didn't you? Don't you get tired of the same thing, same thing, same situation? I'm not a groundhog. I'm not repeating nothing. I'm not going back to that foolishness. They who one and nine said, can I prophesy? The sickness that was appropriate once ain't coming back the second time. Oh, God, God said in Exodus, the Egyptians I see today, I'll see them no more. God said, oh, hallelujah. God said, thank you, Lord, that there is no weapon that is formed against me that will prosper. It may be formed, but it won't prosper. Anybody believe the word of the Lord? I'm not going to believe when I'm in process. I'm going to dream and try. So what do we do? Number one, I'm closing. We must be fully convinced that God has greater in mind. Somebody declared God got greater in mind. Whatever you're going through, that should be the first thing you say after hallelujah. I've learned this. God's got greater, something greater in mind. I learned that from Abraham when God told him to kill Isaac. The reason why Abraham had a ram caught in the thicket, he didn't know it at first until he proved he was going to obey God. But the ram sacrifice, it represented something greater is in the works. Y'all didn't hear what I said. The ram is a male sheep and the male is the seed of future generations. Somebody got to understand the reason why the ram was sacrificed because God got something greater in mind. Number two, when you go, oh, glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost. When you're dealing with this process and you're about to plunder the enemy, you must trust that he knows what to teach us and how to teach us. Look at a neighbor and say, the way I learned 
Uh, it's not necessarily the way you learn. Uh, I'm a different kind of learner. Uh, some through the water, uh, some through the flood, uh, some uh, through the fire, uh, and yet all through the blood, uh, some uh, through great sorrows. Uh, but God gives a song uh, in the night season uh, and all. The day long. I may not go through what you go through, but I'm going to come through it. And that's number three. We must become confident that God Himself wants to plunder my Egyptians. Y'all ever heard that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just? Y'all not talking to me now. Everything come against me. It had to get God's permission, but it was a divine setup to give the enemy a setback, to give the enemy a destructive force. Whatever God allows me to deal with, He's setting up the enemy to plunder the enemy. He's already seen the end. If God allowed me to go through it, I'm coming through it with flying colors. I'm coming out of it with fine praise. Can somebody declare that number four, I came to this process because it came to pass. It did not come to stay. Anybody going through something now, I dare you declare it came to pass. Transition your comma. Transition your semicolon and said it came uh, semicolon or comma, even use ellipsis uh, and declare to pass. Uh, I dare 10 people uh, look at another 10 and say, I don't know what you're dealing with, uh, but I heard, uh, I heard, I heard uh, that it came to pass. Uh, greater is he uh, that is in me uh, than he that is in the world. Somebody clap your hands and give God and it came to pass free. Oh, Jesus. And number five says, I should expect to be enriched for life. What happened? And I come through I'm going to plunder the enemy. Champ, can I use your memory? No, you can stay right there, but I need your enthusiasm to overwhelm. <laughs> He's like, listen, what you get ready to do? Champ, you tell me if I'm wrong. When you went to Europe and fought for that championship, did you have the championship before you went there, or you went there to take it? I hear what you say. Can you say it a little louder? Ah. Can you get this picture in your mind? Because I remember that picture, Jack. When they put that bell on him for the first time. World champion. He didn't take that championship by asking him. He didn't say, please, Mr. Ross. That was a ball. <laughs> Could you please give me your belt? He whooped yeah. Rossi's hind end. Put Rossi in an indescribable predicament. But I'm losing what I thought I would never do. Do you not realize that every victory you win, a belt is put around you? Every time you get through your situation, my God, you're plundering the enemy. Can I ask you a question? Do you remember Rossi or do you remember Petway? <laughs> my God, do you remember? Oh, come on now. I say when you come through process, it will enrich you. Whose name is Mitch?
made you a championship. The one who wears a belt. Somebody ought to say, I'm going to wear my belt because it's going to enrich me for the rest of my life. Every victory I win, every enemy I knock out, I'm taking my stuff back. I'm getting my victory and I declare my clothes. I heard the Bible say, thanks be to God who has given me the victory through Jesus Christ, my Lord. I'm proud to take it back. I'm proud to plunder the enemy. Can you stand on your feet and declare I'm going to win this process. I'm going to endure this process. I'm going to beat the enemy at this game. I'm taking back everything God got from me. Come on, somebody, take it back, take it back. My God, begin to reach down. My God, and bring it down. They give God glory. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I am taking it back. I'm on the plunder of the enemy. It's going to enrich me. It's going to bless me. Come on, lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. When God says, have you considered my servant? So much so that enemy said, that's all right. Because I've fell for that before. Have you considered my servant Joseph? See, the devil not stupid. He just thinks you're going to give up. But there comes a point he gets tired. And you got to prove it. You got the plunder. Take no prisoner. Have no mercy. And get your stuff out of us. I'm not going to talk about cars, cabs, cribs, and clubs. The four C's that we focus on. Because if you get what God got from you, cars won't come. Cash won't come. Might even design your own line. But quite frankly, I'm tired of wearing somebody else's name. Who am I stuff? That's why I'm re I'm re opening our authentic clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's why. That, that's my name. I was telling God, yeah, I was declaring, but God said, you will, but there's process. You got to learn how not to eat your seed. You got to learn how to have delayed gratification. Because see, I didn't learn that when I made a little money. in my spirit. Somebody say, long time. I don't want to say that. I'll say it. I was stupid. If you don't eat your seed, seed is a thing you replant. <laughs> See, I like sunflower seed. I got a choice. Will I plant some and grow more sunflower? Or will I eat? Or will I do nothing with it and let the seed dry out? Every time God let you plunder the enemy. You got to decide. I'm going to comply with this routine. Find out an old understanding better take no I'm talking about no more than mine. I'm talking about the stuff that God intended for me. I'm going to plunder the enemy. I'm leaving here today with a check back. I was broke and delivered. I said, I'm leaving here today with a check back. I said, I'm leaving here today with a check back. I'm leaving here today. I'm 
I'm going to say it to your kids. But to take back a man. And I already told you when the people was found out, you know what you said to me before. And it's my bankrupt. Don't you have me in your bankrupt judgment? Say it with me. This anointing. I must be forgiven. I must be forgiven. That God has greater than God. With this anointing. I must trust. That he knows what to teach me and how to teach me. Glory. With this anointing, I must become confident that God wants to use me to plunder the enemy. Oh, with this anointing, I must embrace the truth that it came to pass. And we're not going through this. I'm not going through this process to stay. I must be convinced with this anointing that I should be enriched in my life. That's my expectation. Now lift your head, put your hands together, open your mouth, and give God glory. Since the confusion in the ranks of the enemy, he thought he had you bound. He thought he had you depressed. But somebody say, Thank you, Lord, because I'm plundering the enemy. Yes, Lord. Glory. Man, Glory. hope y'all got that. Glory. Man, Glory. See, there's enough plunder for everybody. Amen. Amen. I ain't got to be jealous of you. I just got to go through the process. Amen. Can I say this Amen. word? Jealousy. Is the initial sign that I don't have the sense to fight myself. Why well, hate on somebody when I can have my own? If I just fight, the fight. Yeah. Every no don't mean no. Every no means try to walk. Yeah. I'm gonna say this, y'all get mad, don't hate on me. I got 40 years under my belt. That woman told me no the first time I tried to live with her. Mm -hmm. She told me no. <laughs> she told me no. I ain't telling nobody. She <laughs> told me no. I had to go one time. I was just trying to see if she liked me because I was going to quit the old girl who said <laughs> And she told me, don't you play those games? Because I don't want you like that. I ain't desperate for no man. She made me work for it. So the second time I came back, I came correct. Forty years later, I'm still correct. When I went to Bishop Monroe Randolph's son to see you at the time and told him I was called to preach, he said, boy, get out of my face. God didn't call you. My pastor was harsh to me because first thing I did was interrupt him while I was talking to somebody. Did not respect him and he was due. And just tried to pull him aside to get a word in because I carried his briefcase. And said, You ain't called. Go sit down somewhere. I went away mad, upset. You don't recognize my ministry. You don't hear from God. God dealt with me a succession of experience. Six months later, I called the secretary, made an appointment, did it right. Sat in his office as a 12 year old young man. Told him I called to preach. He said, I know. I just wanted to make sure you meant it. So I said, Dad, why'd you tell me no? Because you interrupted me. It was rude. You weren't ready to preach a Monday. Did my initial message at 13, was officially licensed at 14. 40 some years later, still preaching. Amen. Not because I'm so good, but because God said, I'm going to enrich your life. Amen. There's power in doing it right. Amen. Although it's a process, it's still power. That's why I ain't bragging. 
But that's why when I was consecrated bishop, December 9th, uh, 3rd, 1999, Friday night, Bishop Saunders was here. Sick. Guess who got out of that sickness? Came and laid hands on me and poured oil on my head and consecrated me as bishop of the Lord's Church. Did I deserve it? No. But God enriched me. Turning his briefcase, picking up his red undershirts, being what people call the flunky. God enriched me. I don't know a lot of brothers and my brothers and, and, and contemporary friends that can say what I just said. Bishop Saunders has been dead since August 8, 2008. But I'll never forget the guy who was born in the ill and laid hands on me. I don't remember him. Somebody just say right now, this is the altar call. I'm in front of you. Come on, come on. This is the altar call. You lift your voice. You lift your hands. This is the altar call. You declare that I'm evil here with the knowledge that I'm plundering the enemy. And I'm not going to stop till I take everything that God got for me that he stole. And I'm not just going to pray for me. I'm going to pray for others. I'm going to encourage people not to quit. But there's enough plunder for everybody. Father, I've done what you told me. I got to go. I'm over my time. Let your blood prevail. Let your grace rest on us. And Father, prove your word today. Prove your word today. Do something unusual today. I'm asking you as your servant. Lord, you said the signs and wonders confirm the word. Amen. Prove yourself today. Amen. Even that you prepare the communion, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Even that you prepare to pass it out as we are this call, call y'all. Y'all ask me, God, to give me glory. Telling God, I'm going to plunder this enemy today. And I'm not going to see these Egyptians no more. See, the LBC, we have a process, and that's not just for salvation. This is also for us to walk in our deliverance. Amen. That I must, I must admit that the enemy did steal some stuff from me, but I'm going to get it back. I must admit, I'm going to get it back. That I must believe it's for me to get it back. Then I must commit to take care of it this time like I never did before. Amen? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it right now because this is the only call. I shall have what I say. Mark 11, 23. If I ask, if I pray and believe that I receive it, the Bible says I shall have it because I'm asking according to his will, not my lust. His will. And I have confidence according to 1 John 5. 14 and 15. And because I ask according to his will, I have the petition that I desire of him. Y'all get ready to plunder the enemy. I say get ready to plunder the enemy. I say it again. Get ready to plunder the enemy. Come on, get ready to plunder the enemy. Oh, praise the mom church. Praise everybody. Come on, give God glory. about plundering the enemy. 
Too small for me. Hallelujah. You be seen the foolish. You have not been served with the strangers. Those at home take a communion with us. That's why we're getting out a little bit later. Amen. Please be patient with us. Get your elements, bread, and your cup if you're at home. I sanctified by the word. It doesn't have to be what we're taking. If you only have water, today is enough. If you only have a loaf of bread, today is enough. Just bring it home. And we're ready to receive your finger with us. Amen. For the next minute, everybody, if you've been served with your hand, if you have not been served, if you have not been served, when you've been served, been served, son. Amen. South board, you've been served. Here's security, you've been served. Everybody. Chief Burger, you've been served. I did my Lord Jesus. Shut up, Father. Thank you, Jesus. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, what an awesome night that was. He had been giving his disciples clues, saying, I'm going up to Jerusalem. Son of man will be betrayed. He'll be you know, treated shamefully. Tried in a kangaroo court. They, he didn't say that word, but that's what it was. And, uh, treated horribly. But he gave himself. He said, as he sat with him, he took the bread and broke it, that this is my body, which I give. For you. Say, please remember me. Let's take now the broken body of our Lord Jesus to remember him. Let's eat and draw the Lord. Let us take the cup which holds the crushed produce of a great. The great, you get great juice. It represents the blood of our Lord. He was wounded by our transgressions, bruised by our iniquities, the chastisement of his peace and the puffs, and our peace of blood. And with his stripes we are healed. Let us now take the body and the blood. Thank God for the Don't receive the word today. Pastor Al was coming back to prepare us for our giving. Amen. And we want to declare over every giver right now that as you obey God and receive your tithe and offering, we believe in tithe here, not as an old custom. Can I dispel the lie? Tithing is not Old Testament covenant. Tithing is into an eternal system because it was done through Melchizedek from the Mount from Abraham. Melchizedek was an eternal priest of God. So once by the law first mentioned, you do it the first time, it is supposed to be for all time. When you tithe, you're not tithing the whole covenant, you're tithing to the eternal system. Because Abraham Instituted the garden when 
God said, the other tree must be chosen. The one tree he wanted. That one tree represented Hebrew taste of time. Had Adam and Eve left that tree alone, they would not have been And I thank God they didn't have that tree. So I'm so glad we have that tree. So we may pass it out with the rest of Sure Amen. Amen. We thank God for His Word today. The Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. Come, let's give it up. Come, put our hands together and thank God for the power of the Word of my Lord. Hallelujah! 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 God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank God. Amen. I give God praise. I thank God. Amen for the word. And I just want to say it is opportunity time right now. Can we put our hands together? Shout something in the atmosphere after that word today. We can just go on and aim it and just get it. Just take it. Just do what God has commanded us to do. Amen. No excuses whatsoever. But we can have, amen, what God has given us. We have the tools we need. Hallelujah. Life of this church has generous and faithful tithers and givers. Your generous giving adds value to this ministry. So now, again, is your opportunity time to continue your generosity in giving. Praise the Lord. We got help today. Amen. We got Kevin. We got Kayla. We got them. Amen. Holding the baskets. Glory to God. Let's look to the Lord this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, amen, for this day, God, for your blessing us and allowing us to give, to have the ability to give, how you've given us the strength, you've given us, oh God, all we have, all that we need to give into the kingdom. I thank you right now, good God, because we understand that when we give, oh God, it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. Oh, hallelujah. Those men shall give into our bosom. And the same measure that we give out, it will be measured back to us. So we thank God. We give God the praise this morning for the ability to give. And we thank you, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Now, ways to give, you can give through www.lbcbaltimore.com. Dot org or through cash app, which is dollar sign life um, builders church is capital L, capital E, capital C, or you can also give through PayPal at Life Builders Church. Amen. So you can give those several ways. You can also take cash, even if you do have cash. All right. So we just thank God right now. And I, amen. And does anyone need an envelope or amen? Or if not. Probably most of you are giving through e-giving, and that's good too. And that works just fine. Amen. But if you have your seat and you want to come up and you want to give, let's stand your feet right now. Amen. And let's, amen, all join in and follow these two sections here where our kind little, amen, basket holders are standing. So this aisle, this aisle, we're going to have some nice giving music from the back. Hallelujah for Kevin. He's got it covered back there today. Let's just give God some praise for Brother Kevin this morning. Mining the music, all of the theatrics. Hallelujah. Let's come in the name of the Lord. Amen. Starting from the bench all the way down. Amen. From back to down and then back up again. Let's go right back up the same aisle. You come down. Yes, ma'am. Everybody praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You worship through the tomb, God. Faithful, the same yesterday. Ooh. Ooh, the minute you're not disturbed. Also, the mail you're giving to, like this church, Caleb Dent Incorporated, West. Little sweet thing in here, Tennessee, Maryland. Anybody love the word? Anybody love God this morning? Love God your word. Because I'm great. Yeah. Are there any announcements this morning? 
Join us for prayer every day from 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. or Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Amen. And you can also call, amen, the number is 605-475-4700. Access code is 585-263-POUND. Amen. God is good. Give God the praise. Amen. What a wonderful week. What a wonderful day. Wednesday, join us for impact groups at 7.30 p.m. through Zoom. Amen. The meeting ID is 876-9567-6730. The password is 037-569. Amen. And see the web address here. You can also join us through the web, direct through the web address. Amen. Join us. Amen. On Wednesdays, we're studying why Jesus came. It has been fantastic. God has been moving miraculously. Amen. So join us. Amen. On this Wednesday. All right. So, amen. This way up. This way up. Amen. Thinking about going back to school and getting back to work. All right, you can see this particular flower is, all right, this particular flyer Wednesday, I believe it's May 10th, amen, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Essex Library on, I think it's on 100 Eastern Boulevard, and you find out about how to get back into the workforce if you just really want to get back to work. That's good, and then I believe it's free, amen? So that is wonderful for anyone wanting to get back into the workforce. Amen. So come on and join them there or share it with someone that you know who's interested in getting back to work, back into the workplace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So there's a trip coming up. All right. Um, it is uh, I believe it's from Maryland, but it's for six hundred ninety-five dollars. You can see um, more information. If you want more information, you can ask us. We can forward it to you. All right. If you're interested in taking a nice trip this summer, I believe our friends, the Tallies, are sponsoring this trip um, this summer. Um, it's going to be fantastic. Why don't you join if you're looking for something to do? A quick, a nice getaway, nice, nice little getaway. Join them. They'll take really good care of you. They're our friends. They're really, really good people. Really good people. All right. We have a video. We have a video that's going to be shown. All right. All right. Let's prepare for the video.
Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God tonight for the sacrament. We thank God for, amen, for the bishop for sharing that. Amen. If you're interested, if you know someone who needs some help with their children, um, please do it. We'll also send it by via text so that you can um, share it and look at it again. But even more than that, uh, we want to make sure that we are not that somebody gave their heart to God. Oh, hallelujah. I can't. Okay, from Atlanta, Georgia, has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I tell you, there's something going on. I don't know where they are, and it doesn't matter where they are, but something is going on over there because the men and the staffers are hearing the word of God and they're being on fire. They are running to Jesus, and this is the time to run to Jesus like never before. We ought to give God the praise. Hallelujah. There is nothing, oh my God, more important than we. And we think about a soul that's lost, giving their lives to the Lord. Amen. I thank God. Thank God. Thank God that we are here. It's not about us, it's about Jesus. Thank God for. The venue, the venue, the venue, God, the venue, God, the ability, God, to extend salvation, the ability, God, to extend you to the world, to someone who's lost, and now they're found. Come on, one more time, all oh, heaven rejoice in yeah. one soul. Come on, all oh, heaven rejoice in one soul. All soul. soul that's lost. Oh, God is glorified. He's magnified. Amen. We have come to the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Not quite. <laughs> so it's actually very fitting that, uh, you know, I have my mother up here with me because we have a, a breaking announcement for you guys. Uh, but as you know, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Yes, yes. We're actually going to have a special Mother's Day tribute next Sunday. Uh, so just want to let everyone in the house and everyone watching online to know, uh, please have a brief note and a tribute uh, for your mother. Also, feel free to send a picture if you like, because it's courtesy of Sister Rob. Uh, just so you know, this is a contest. First prize is going to win $50. Right. Amen? Right. That's about two gallons of gas and maybe a gallon for you to you know, have a high luxury car. But yes, this is going to be a contest. Uh, so please uh, be sure to write a brief note or tribute for your mother as well as a picture. And be sure to send it to Sister Roz if you are in house and have any questions. Feel free to direct your questions to Sister Roz in the back. Praise God. Thank the name. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank the Lord. We know this is the month of May, and what else besides Mother's Day is the month of May? What is that national holiday? What is it? What is it again? Come on now, you know. Say it again. What is it? He put way because on May 1st he posted that this is his month and everybody started saying happy birthday. So I said, no, we'll do it early. But we thank God for our bishop. We thank God for the mother of bishop. Amen. And this is Betty Carrington. Because without her, he would not be here. So we thank the mom for being here as well. We just give God glory, honor, and praise. Amen. It's time to go. We don't want to leave your presence. We're just kind of like, you know, taking a pause and coming back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you this day for, oh God, the word. We praise you right now. We're going to plan the Egypt. We're going to get all that you have for us to have, oh God. We're going to possess what you, oh God, have called us to possess. We thank you, God. We recover all. And God, right now, we're going to learn the lesson well and get everything we can get out of it so that we, oh God, can fully possess and move forward and get all that you called us to have. Thank you and amen so far for your word that God has gone forth. It will not return void, but it shall and it has accomplished everything you sent it to do. So go with us.
mighty day, an extraordinary day, a beautiful day with family and loved ones. We pray right now in advance, God, hallelujah, that you would move by your spirit, touch, move, thank you, God, for total healing, restoration, thank you, God, for your protection through the week. We thank you right now. We call crack failure right now to any attack upon the people, upon the broadcast. Apollo, God, those that are here, we decree and declare the attack that's out against your people or against us. It is reversed and boomerangs back seven times greater to the one that sent you with this, which is Satan. And we thank you, God, for releasing your war angels all around us as we go in Jesus' name. And we say that God dwells in the midst of the blessed people. God, God dwells in the midst of life of this church. Grace and peace be unto you. Go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Show some love, somebody. Hallelujah.